A few weeks ago, Bianca Andreescu announced that she'd be skipping the 2022 Australian Open, needing extra time to rest and recover from a difficult 2021 tennis season. Andreescu said there were days where she didn't feel like herself, especially when training or playing matches, and felt that she was carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders. While she says that much of her feelings stem from spending multiple weeks in isolation for COVID quarantine, it's safe to say that her relatively subpar on court performance is a big contributor to this hiatus. So, how did the 2019 US Open champ go from forgetting how it feels to lose, to struggling to string together consecutive wins? Before we look at the decline, let's delve deeper into BB's extraordinary rise to tennis stardom. Andrescu started her tour level main draw tennis career at the 2017 Wimbledon Championships, getting through qualifying before falling in the opening round to Kristina Kukova in straight sets. The following month, she grabbed her first two tour victories at the City Open, getting a win over world number 13 Kiki Mladenovic en route to the quarters. She managed to grab one more tour level main draw win at the Quebec Open before ending the season ranked world number 182. In 2018, Andrescu struggled to make any noise on both the WTA Tour and ITF circuit. She didn't play a tour level main draw match all year, but began rounding her game into form in the ITFs, winning two titles in the US towards the end of the year. Andrescu used the momentum from her late 2018 surge to make a mark in her very first tournament of the 2019 season. Entering the ASB Classic ranked 152nd in the world, Andrescu completely shocked the field, coming through qualifying to beat the top seed and third ranked Caroline Wozniacki, plus legend Venus Williams en route to the finals. Andrescu wowed the Auckland crowd and a great portion of the tennis world with her incredible shot making abilities and immense energy and passion she brought to the court. Her complete game style showed that she could go from absolutely clobbering returns and other groundies to drop shotting opponents all around the court. Andrescu's ability to turn defense into offense with the snap of her fingers stood out to spectators and played a big role in her success. Her dream run came to an end in the finals, where Andrescu came within three points of claiming the title, but fatigue caught up with her in the end, and the more experienced Julia Gerges took full advantage. Despite the disappointing finish, those big wins gave BB the extra boost of confidence to show her that she belonged on these big stages, battling it out against the top players in the world. About three weeks after Auckland, Bianca won the Oracle Challenger Series title at Indian Wells for her biggest pro trophy to date. Two months later, she returned to that same site and did one better, winning the BNB Paribas Open for her very first WTA Tour title. The unseeded 18 row took out five seeds, including Garbina Muguruza, Elena Svitolina, and Angelique Kerber, to become the first ever wildcard to win Indian Wells. This win really made her name a fixture within the mainstream tennis world, skyrocketing her into sports superstardom. Numerous notable public figures, including Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, congratulated the country's newest sports star. After Indian Wells, Andrescu shot up to number 24 in the world, making her the highest ranked teenager in the WTA. Being 28 and 3 on the year, she already had a lot of mileage only 3 months into the season. Despite her practically playing a Grand Slam the week prior, BB got on a plane and played her first round match of the Miami Open just four days after her big triumph. She managed to win three matches before sustaining a shoulder injury in the fourth round. That injury kept her out of the clay lead-up events, and when she did return to the tour for Rolling Girls, she only played one match before withdrawing ahead of the second round due to the shoulder flare-up. She also backed out of Wilburton to give herself ample time to recover. BB made her long-awaited return to the tour at home for the Canadian Open in Toronto. She was pretty rusty early on, but was able to escape in her opening two rounds, especially against Kazakina. From that point forward, she seemed to have regained her game, beating Burton's Pliskova and Kennan en route to the finals. There, of course, Serena had back spasms, handing Andrescu the title. This tournament was obviously very good from the Canadian, but what really stood out here to me was her resilience and her ability to stay headstrong through moments of adversity. There were more up and down moments, like versus Burdens and Pushkova, where she dominated the opening sets, then fell off, but ultimately prevailed when things got real in the third. I feel like she definitely still had that confidence from Indian Wells, even with the long layoff, as that's what got her through those really tough matches early on and kept her alive so that she can continue another great run. For the US Open, Andrescu practically had no drama in the first week, closing out her first three matches in straights. In the second week is where she really showed her champion instincts, being able to persist through her opponent's surges. Her semi-final match against Belinda Bench just really stood out to me because she won in straight sets, but really could have and should have lost in straights. 
Andreescu really showed her grit here, setting off a barrage of early break points and even a set point to steal the first in a tiebreaker. Then in the second set, she was down double breaks on two separate occasions, but just kept plugging away and ultimately wore benches down to claim victory. Playing in her first Grand Slam final at 19 against Serena, Bianca looked like the seasoned veteran and came out and played perhaps one of the best matches of her life to claim her first major trophy. With the win, she became the only Canadian to take home a Grand Slam singles title. Now up to number 5 in the world with the US Open trophy in tow, Bianca, like her predecessor Naomi Osaka, looked to cement herself as the newest face of women's tennis. Um, I never really thought about being famous. My goals have been to just win as many Grand Slams as possible, become number one in the world, but the idea of fame never really crossed my mind. Um, I'm not complaining though. <laughs> it's been it's been a crazy ride this year and um, I can definitely get used to this feeling. However, Bianca unfortunately didn't have an opportunity to build on her major milestone after sustaining a torn meniscus during the WT Finals. This issue kept her out of action for all of 2020, putting a stop to the momentum and hype she created with her breakout 2019 season. Andrescu made her long-awaited return at the 2021 Australian Open, where she fell in the second round to Sue Shea. This was heralded as a huge upset at the time, but it was a very understandable loss, seeing as BB had just come back after such a long layoff, plus she had a tricky opponent who got her out of her comfort zone. The following week, she looked to shake off her rustiness playing the Phillips Island Trophy. There she reached the semis, losing to Marie Boskova despite holding match points. Andrescu didn't win a title in 2021, so that could have been a great opportunity to get a trophy and build some confidence. About a month later, she seemingly rebuilt her confidence anyways at the Miami Open, where she reached the finals. This tournament to me was very reminiscent of the old BB, as she brought that aggressive returning in nearly each of her matches. Most importantly though, she was mentally sharp, pegging in there despite all the deficits and missed breakpoint opportunities, and ultimately found a way to win. She earned four consecutive three set wins, but the one that was most impressive was versus Bukaruta, who had been on fire at that point. After she beat Corbinier, pretty much everyone thought Bianca was finally back. I think Andrescu was in that mode of really not knowing how to do anything but win, until she met Ash Barty in the finals. Fatigue probably played a role in the Canadian's premature finish there, and while she was disappointed, she acknowledged how much of a positive step Miami was for her comeback. However, once again, she was unable to build on her March success, as Andrescu tested positive for COVID upon arriving to play the Madrid Open. This also kept her out of Rome, but she did play the Strasbourg Open. She won two matches there, but pulled out with Rolling Euro starting a week later. The lack of match reps heading into the French likely hurt Andrescu, as she crashed out in the opening round to world number 85 to marriage to Densek. This was an extremely tough loss for the Canadian, falling 9-7 in the third after failing to serve things out up 5-4 in the decider. This, I feel, was a huge missed opportunity for Bianca as Jadansek eventually made the semifinals, taking advantage of a wide open section. That could have easily been BB, and really, she could have won the whole thing. After her loss to Jadansek, she told reporters that she felt that she prepared well to go deep at the slam, but in my opinion, the lack of matches on clay, which is her best surface by the way, impeded her performance. Andrescu didn't see it that way though, and made the decision to fire her longtime coach Sylvain Bruno soon after her Paris exit. With the French disappointment and now being coachless, Andrescu honestly had no true direction heading into the grass season. In her first match on the surface, she fell to Elisa Cornet at Berlin, losing a tight straight setter. Bianca stayed on court after that loss and was serenaded as it was her 21st birthday. As the lady sings, you can just see BB break down from probably not only that loss, but all the struggles she's endured since winning in New York. This was probably one of those moments where she felt like the weight of the world was on her shoulders. At Wimbledon, Andrescu lost to Courtney once more, but this time only managed to win three games. The scoreline was closer than what the match entailed, Bianca having numerous opportunities to get more games on the board. Aside from her many squandered game point chances, the Canadian was 0 for 6 on break points, an issue that's honestly plagued her for much of her career. Much of Andrescu's on-court success derives from confidence, and after the clan grass court season, she practically had none. 
This to me explains her earlier losses during the US Open series. Around this time, she hired a new coach, Sven Gronefeld, who previously worked with Maria Sharapova, Sloan Stevens, among others. Bianca also hired two new agents and a new fitness trainer, hoping a fresh team would lead her in the right direction. Playing the US Open for the first time since winning it two years ago, Bianca says she visualized her success from the 2019 edition, believing it rebuilt her confidence. That seemed to be working as after getting by a tricky opener, BB recorded her fourth and fifth straight set victories of 2021 to once again reach the second week. Many people began to take notice and touted BB to notch her second trophy in flushing. She looked more sure of what she wanted to do on the court and adopted more of a patiently aggressive game style, which helped her in 2019. Things would only get tougher for the sixth seed as she took on Greek sensation Maria Sakri for a spot on the last eight. Andreescu came out very, very strong, going up a double break, coming within a point of going up 5-1. However, we know she never likes making things easier for herself and needed a tiebreaker before finally claiming the opener. Then in the second set, on two separate occasions, Bianca had break points to serve for the match but just couldn't convert. Ultimately, Sakura raised her level and shut the door to send BB packing. This was yet another match that Andreescu should have won, which is unfortunate because it could have done wonders for her confidence and may have changed the trajectory of her season. As her ranking slipped, so did that killer instinct. Despite this, she returned to Indian Wells for the last tournament of the year as the defending champion. Once again, she looked to use those good vibes from two years ago to re-spark that title winning form. Andrescu started her title defense against American Allison Risk and was handed the straight sets win on a platter. After being up a set in 4-1, Bianca had two match points at 5-4, but couldn't close until about an hour later for yet another three set win. Even though she prevailed, Andrescu's inability to close in straights hurt her because I think it made her less confident about her game. I feel like she's telling herself, dang, if I'm struggling this much with lower ranked players, how can I beat the better ones? BB ultimately fell in the next round to Annette Contavite in a relatively competitive straight sets match, but what stood out to me was how much more assertive Contavite looked than the Canadian. BB really hasn't looked like her normal energetic self this season, and as she explained in her hiatus statement, off course circumstances have been a big contributor. She even talked about those same struggles back at the US Open. For sure, a couple times this year were tough, when I caught COVID and the part about not being able to see my friends and family for such a long time, Andrescu said. My grandma caught COVID. She's 86. She survived, thankfully, but so many of these things made me question, should I be traveling during this time? But you can't stop forever, so I tried to deal with everything in the best way that I could. I think it's a great decision by Bianca to just step aside and get right mentally and emotionally before even dealing with tennis. I think the entire thing with her meniscus was extremely hard not being able to compete. And then when she's finally able to return to the tour, things don't go her way and she's struggling to regain her top form. Then the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic has its implications too, which have been kind of tough for the 21 year old. So yes, Bianca, take all the time you need to regroup. Answering the title of this video, a lot of the problem isn't really Bianca's fault herself as much of her issues have been out of her control. However, focusing on things that she can control upon her return, I think number one, she and Sven or maybe even another coach need to go over tactics and build Bianca a solid game strategy. She even admits that much of the time she plays off instinct, which explains her sometimes poor shot selection, especially during break points. I know it can be tough to execute when you have so many weapons in your arsenal as she does. This kind of plays into my next point which is that she needs to do a better job of taking advantage of her chances. As I mentioned before, Bianca has always had a subpar breakpoint conversion rate, but it didn't really hurt her two years ago because she always found a way to win in the end. She cannot do that right now, so she needs to take every chance she gets to win as convincingly as possible. That I feel would give her the most confidence, getting those straight set wins of relatively decent top players. It would make her feel like she's one of the best again. Andreescu is a player that relies heavily on confidence because while she knows she's an excellent player, she doesn't have the slam experience of an Osaka per se to rely on in tough periods. Speaking of Naomi, I like for Bianca to adopt a similar schedule to the Japanese woman. I don't think she should be playing as scarcely, but Andrescu should really only play tournaments that she's 100% committed to or passionate about. As I've said throughout this video, Bianca relies a lot on her energy level to get through matches, and when she's fully engaged, her level is generally higher. Meanwhile, if the energy is not 
there, she's more prone to subpar performances, like at Chicago, for example. I also think a lighter schedule lessens the risk for injury and gives her a greater opportunity to go home and see her loved ones. And then lastly, I just say be patient. I know Andrescu must be frustrated with how things have gone the past few years, and it has to be difficult to lose to players who aren't as skilled as her. However, she needs to have extended grace with herself and understand that it won't be easy as the field has gotten even deeper. I think actually enjoying the process of working her way back up the rankings can go a long way. How do you feel about Bianca Andreescu and her current situation? What do you think she needs to do differently in order to regain her slam winning form? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.